Today I'm creating uh, an art journal page out of my 8 inch circular art journal. I'm going to be using the new Damage Damask papers. This is the Hot Cocoa paper from Indigo Blue. So I'm going to cut out a circle the exact same size as my art journal page from the paper. I'm just going to um, draw around the page and then cut it out. Once I'm happy with the size of the circle, I don't mind that the fact that there's going to be a little bit of a white border all around, that will be disguised later on. I'm just going to glue the whole thing down, just using some multi-purpose glue. Uh, the whole thing is just going to go straight over my page. So as you can see I'm just spreading the glue around with my fingers to make sure there's a fairly even coating all the way around and I'm just going to flip it over and stick it down onto my art journal page. Once I'm happy that it's stuck down completely I'm going to grab a little sanding block and I'm going to just sand and distress all the edges and some aspects across the actual page itself. So I'm going to just go up and down on the page as well just to make it a little bit more distressed than it is already. And to remove all of the paper dust that's stuck to the page I'm just going to rub over the entire thing with a baby wipe. And then before I can move on I need to make sure that the entire page is dry so I'm just going to give it a quick blast with my heat gun. The next stage is to add a gesso wash over the top of the page and to do this I'm just going to grab the indigo blue gesso good in white and I'm just going to add a little bit of water to it and then I'm just going to add a colour wash over the top of the entire page. So I'm happy with the amount of gesso that's on the page now. The pattern has been knocked into the background and all that remains to be done for this section now is just to have a quick tidy up and then we're ready to move on to our next stage of creating the art journal page. And because I'm going to be using the gilding flake on this page I need to get my glue ready. So this is a piece of fat foam and this is the bottle of flitter glue. So I'm just going to add some of the flitter glue to the fat foam. Now all I'm doing is just um, adding the glue to the foam directly and then I'm just kneading it in using the spatula just so that it sinks in creating a kind of ink stamp pad or a glue stamp pad if you know what I mean. So I'm pushing the glue into the foam itself. So you can leave that sit for quite a few minutes so I'm just going to let that sit there and then I'm just going to give the page another quick blast with the heat gun and this is the stamp that I want to use. This is the new dual rubber stamp uh, which is a beautiful unicorn and all I'm doing is just tapping 
the fat foam with the glue onto the stamp and you can see the glue is transferring onto the stamp. All I'm doing is just tapping lightly, you don't need to go mad with it. So just a light tap and that will transfer the glue onto the stamp. So to transfer the image all you need is a light stamping. You don't need to press really really hard for this which is why I'm using the rocker block from Crafters Companion. I'm just doing a light rocking and that will transfer the glue from the stamp onto the page and there you can see the glue in the shape of the unicorn on the page. You do have quite a few minutes work time with this glue but for the purpose of the video I'm going to go straight into adding the Mega Flake. It's been about 15 minutes since I actually stamped it. So I'm using the Chariot of Fire Mega Flake and as you can see I'm just taking a great big wad of the Gilding Flake from the pot and then I'm just going to lightly rub the flake over the area where I've stamped the unicorn image. And while you're watching me adding the gilding flake to that stamped image, I just want to point out that if you're using the flitter glue on a stamp, you do need to wash the stamp straight away in cold water. Don't use hot because this can affect the glue. But if you just use cold water, if you wash the stamp straight away, then it will not damage your stamp in any way. So we're just putting away all the excess flake that we're not going to use and then we'll just drop that to one side and then any remaining bits and pieces we can just drop into the bin. So now we're ready to remove all the excess flake from our stamped image and to do that we're going to use a scoochie. As you can see all I'm doing is just gently rubbing over the top of the stamped image with the scoochie and that is removing any of the excess gilding flake that hasn't stuck to the glue. And you can see what a beautiful shine you get using that Chariot of Fire gilding flake. So now I'm happy with the unicorn itself, I'm going to use the same piece of fat foam and flitter glue that's still quite loaded up and I'm going to go all the way around the edge of my art journal page to add some of that gold, beautiful gold mega flake all the way as a border. And as before, when I'm happy, I've got enough of the gilding flake on the border. I'm just going to rub lightly over the top with the scoochie and that's just going to remove any excess gilding flake that isn't stuck down. So I want to add a little bit more dimension, a bit more depth into the background and to do that I'm going to bring out one of the Indigo Blue new stencils. This is the Damaged Damask stencil which goes with the papers and this is the English Cottage Artiste acrylic paint and this is the Goldfinger uh, metallic paint. So just using a craft sponge I'm going to just put some of the gold paint through the stencil using the sponge. You could of course use a stencil brush if you have one. So 
So now that we've added a little bit more interest into the background, all I need to do is just to dry off that metallic gold paint to make sure it's all nice and dry before we move on to our next step, which is to add a little bit of art journaling onto our page. So I've already printed and cut out the quote or the phrase that I want to use on my art journal page. And all I'm going to do is to stick it down onto my art journal page using this um, standard glue stick from Prit. It's just the original glue stick from Prit. And now that our quote, our phrase is stuck down onto the art journal page, I just want to add a little bit more detail around the word blocks. And to do that, I'm going to use the Signo Gold metallic rollerball pen. This is the same as the Signo White rollerball pen. Obviously the difference is in the color, but it's exactly the same make, exactly the same brand, and does exactly the same job. It's just this one is gold. So as you can see, all I'm doing is just adding a little bit of doodling, a little bit of scribbles around my word blocks, just to add a little bit more interest, just to kind of blend those into the background a little bit more, rather than just have the stark white blocks as you can see them. So at this stage I was happy with the page as it is and I thought I didn't really want to do anything else to it and so I decided to sign and date it. And then once I'd done that I suddenly realised that there was something missing. So first of all I had to add the holes back into my page so that I could reattach it into my art journal. But then I thought there was definitely something missing from the page. It just needed a final and finishing touch. And to do that I decided to add some white splatters across the page. So to add the white splatters, I've just taken the indigo blue white gesso once again, and all I'm going to do is just to add a little bit of a blob of the white paint onto my craft mat, and then I'm just going to spritz it with water to water it down a little bit, and then mix it together using my fan brush, that will then allow me just to splatter the white paint across the page. Again, this just adds a little bit more visual interest and helps to break up those blocks of patterns in the background. And I think you'll agree, it does look a lot nicer with those white splatters on the page. Happy now. And that's it for this page. I'm calling this complete. I hope you enjoyed watching this art journal page process from start to finish. If you did, please remember to give the video a thumbs up. You can share the video with all your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I will see you all again real soon. Bye for now.